Vocabulary in context. Number one, scolding. This lion is scolding its cubs after they misbehaved. The root word is scold. Number two, greedily. The chipmunk eats greedily and does not share with others. Greedily. The root word is greed. Number three, ignores. The fawn ignores its mother because it is paying attention to something far away. Ignores. The root word is ignore. Number four, hesitation. The bear shows hesitation as the hikers walk by. Hesitation. The root word is hesitate. Number five, burden. The travelers have placed a heavy burden or load on the yak. Burden. Number six, glancing. The boy is glancing or looking quickly at something outside the window. The root word is glance. Number seven, base. Water flows near the base or bottom of the mountain known as El Capitan. Base. Console. The girl's mother tries to console her after she fell and hurt herself. Console. Number nine, drowsy. After hunting, the fox became drowsy and fell asleep in its den. Drowsy. Number 10, heroic. The heroic campers fought the wildfire until help arrived. Heroic. The root word is hero. Some parts of plays are just like other stories. As you read the play, Two Bear Cubs, look for the setting and the main characters. Identify the problem that the characters face and how they solve it. Unlike other stories, plays are organized by scenes that help to break up a performance on stage. Note how the plot events in each scene lead to the events in the next scene. Use a story map like this one to record text evidence about the setting, characters, and plot. You should draw your own map like this one on a separate piece of paper to help you keep track of information as you read. Use your story map to record information about the setting, characters, and plot events from each scene. Look for new information to add to your story map as you read. You should understand that you should think about how the setting, characters, and plot build upon previous scenes and lead to new events in upcoming scenes. Your target strategy is to summarize. You should identify the main action that occurs in each scene of Two Bear Cubs. Then combine these events to summarize or retell briefly the plot of the play. Let's preview the topic, social relationships. The huge rock El Capitan rises out of the beautiful Yosemite Valley of California. The Miwok are American Indians whose ancestors lived in the valley for hundreds of years. For centuries, the Miwok have told a myth that explains how the rock first came to be. Yet the myth tells more than that. It shows that the Miwok believed it was important for a community to come together to help each other in times of trouble. In Two Bear Cubs, you'll read the Miwok myth as a play. You'll see how the animals try to help when two bear cubs and their mother are in need. Myths tell about the culture of the people who created the story. In Two Bear Cubs, the animals you will meet will behave like people. And as with people, their social relationships are an important part of their community. In this myth, the animals work together to help each other. As you read Two Bear Cubs, you will learn more about the social relationships that the characters have with one another in their community. Here is our anchor text for the week. Remember, this is a play. Look at the section that says genre. 
A play is a story that can be performed for an audience. As you read, look for headings that tell you where the scenes begin, dialogue or the words of the characters, and stage directions. Now, I know this is a play because I see a list of characters right here. I will look for the other elements of a play as I read. A new scene number will tell me that there has been a change in settings such as time or place. Characters' dialogue or what characters say will tell me how they think and feel. Stage directions help me understand which characters are in the scene and where and how they move. A play has a setting, characters, and a plot. So you're going to be using your story structure map that we talked about on the previous page. This play is a myth, and I know myths give a message about life through what the characters learn. One purpose for reading could be to find out what the characters learn, which would help to determine the message. And when we can determine the message, we can also determine the theme of the book. The essential question that we're exploring this week is, how do members of a community help each other? Think about this question as you read Two Bear Cubs. Prologue. Storyteller enters from stage left. Many snows have come and gone since this story was first told. My people, the Miwok, live in California, some in what is now called Yosemite Valley. We tell stories of the old days, when animal people lived in the valley. One story begins with Mother Grizzly going to the river to catch fish for herself and her cubs. Exits. Scene 1. Setting. A forest and mountain. Stage left. Open sky dotted with clouds. Stage right. Blue cloth or painted cardboard across the front of the stage suggests a river. Mother Grizzly enters from stage left, holding a fish basket, and stands on the river bank. Her cubs, younger brother and older brother, enter and begin to play in the water. Older brother, laughing and splashing. Don't be afraid of a little water, younger brother. Younger brother, splashing back. I'm not older brother. Mother Grizzly, scolding. Children, stop scaring away the fish, or we will have nothing to eat. Out of the water, now. They obey, but manage a last splash or two. I want you to gather berries, but stay close and do not go down river. Strange things happen there. Mother Grizzly moves to stage left. The cubs move to stage right while playing and pushing each other. A berry bush appears. Older brother, look at these berries. He picks and eats them greedily. They are so sweet. Taste them. Younger brother, we should take them back to mother. When older brother ignores him, the younger cub begins eating berries too. Suddenly he rubs his stomach. I have eaten too many, older brother. We will bring some back later. Oh, I am full too. Pointing. Let's see what is down river. Younger brother, worried. We are not supposed to go there. Older brother, taunting, starts off. I see only the river and trees and stones. What is there to fear? After a moment's hesitation, younger brother follows. Younger brother, rubbing his eyes. I'm tired. The hot sun and my full belly make me want to sleep. Older brother, yawning. 
My lamp would be good. A raised platform, decorated to look like a rock, slides into view. Younger brother, pointing. See that big, flat rock? It looks so warm. Let's rest there. The cubs lie down side by side, stretch, and fall asleep. Storyteller, entering stage left. The cubs fell asleep on the stone, but the stone was the seed of a mountain. As they slept, the stone grew bigger and bigger, higher and higher. His hand spiraling upward suggests the growing mountain. It carried them so high that only Hawk saw them as he flew by. Pauses. Hawk enters, stage right, waving his arms like wings. He flies past the rock, looks at the sleeping cubs, and then flies back off stage the way he came. Storyteller, continuing. Meanwhile, Mother Grizzly wondered what had become of her cubs. Exits, stage left. Scene two. Fox and Badger are on stage, leaning cedar planks against a tent-shaped frame of poles. Mother Grizzly enters, stage left, calling, Older brother! Younger brother! Mother Grizzly sees Fox and Badger. Fox! Badger! Have you seen my cubs? Fox! No, I have been helping Badger build a new home. Badger! Neither of us has seen them. We will help you look for them. Fox, Badger, and Mother Grizzly search to the right. Mother Deer and Fawns enter, stage left, and seat themselves grinding acorns. Fox, Badger, and Mother Grizzly return to stage left and discover Mother Deer and her two fawns. Mother Grizzly. Mother Deer, my little ones are missing. Have you seen them? Mother Deer. They have not come by while my children and I were grinding acorns, but we will help you find them. Mother Deer and Fawns rise and join the others as they move to stage right and then back again to left. They meet Mountain Lion carrying a load of firewood. Analyze the text. Story structure. How can you tell that this is a new scene? How does it build on what happens in scene one? Mother Grizzly. Mountain Lion, we are looking for my lost cubs. Mountain Lion sets her burden down. I will help you find them. All move to stage right, while Mouse enters from left and sits. Mouse is weaving a basket. The group at stage right moves left and beats Mouse. Mother Grizzly. Mouse, have you seen my cubs? We have searched everywhere for them. We have looked in hollow logs and caves and in the berry patch and the honey tree. Mouse, rising. No, but I will help you. Perhaps they went down river. Mother Grizzly. I warned them not to go there. Mother Deer, patting Mother Grizzly's shoulder and glancing at her own fawns. Sometimes our little ones do not listen very well. I agree that we should look downriver. The animals on stage move slowly toward the mountain. Fox, stopping, pointing. Look, everyone, there is a mountain where there was only a stone before. All slowly raise their hands as they scan the mountain from base to summit. As they do, Hawk enters as before, flapping his wings. Mother Grizzly, I see Hawk. Cups paws around her mouth and shouts up to Hawk. Hawk, have you seen my lost cubs? Hawk, calling down. They are asleep on this strange new mountain. Mother Grizzly calling up. 
Please fly to my children, wake them, and help them find their way down. Hawk pantomimes flying toward cubs and being blown back by mountain winds. After several tries, he speaks to those below. Hawk, calling down. The wind will not let me reach your little ones. Someone will have to climb up and rescue them. Storyteller enters stage left. One by one, the animals tried to reach the cubs. Animals pantomime their attempts as Storyteller speaks. Mother Grizzly tried several times, but always tumbled back. Mouse jumped from stone to stone, but quickly got scared and jumped back down. Badger climbed a bit higher. Mother Deer, a little bit higher. Fox did even better, but none succeeded. Even Mountain Lion failed. When Mother Grizzly sees this, she begins to weep. The other creatures gather around to console her. Unnoticed by them, Measuring Worm enters. Mother Grizzly, sadly, Mountain Lion, you are the best climber and were my best hope. There is no one now who can save my cubs. Measuring Worm, I will try. The other animals turn and stare at him, and then all except Mother Grizzly begin to laugh. Mountain Lion. Foolish measuring worm! Do you think you can do what the rest of us have failed to do? Mouse, meanly. Tutakana! Your name is longer than you are! Storyteller, appearing stage left. My people call measuring worm Tutakana, which means little curl stretch. He moves by stretching, too, then curling, talk the way a caterpillar moves. Mother Grizzly drying her eyes. I welcome your help. Measuring Worm begins to climb, all the while crying, To talk! The other animals sit, staring at the mountain, watching as the worm stretches and curls in a climbing motion. Measuring Worm, loudly, To Tuck! Two! Tuck! Scene three. Storyteller. In time, Measuring Worm climbed even higher than Mountain Lion. He climbed so high that the animals below could no longer see or hear him. Sometimes he would grow afraid and stop when he saw how high he had climbed and how much higher he had to go. Then he thought about poor Mother Grizzly, so worried at the bottom of the mountain. He thought about the cubs in danger at the top. Then he found his courage again and continued to climb, all the while crying, Measuring Worm, To Tuck! Two, tuck! Two, tuck! Storyteller exits as Measuring Worm finally crawls onto the rock. He bends over the two sleeping cubs and calls. Measuring Worm, wake up! The cubs are drowsy as they wake and stretch and yawn. Older brother, crawls and looks over the side of the rock. Younger brother, something terrible has happened. Look how high we are. Younger brother, also on his knees, peers down. We are trapped here. We will never get back to our mother. The cubs begin to cry. They have forgotten Measuring Worm. Measuring Worm, comforting the cubs. Do not be afraid. I have come to guide you safely down the mountain. Just follow me and do as I say. We will follow the safe path that brought me here. 
Older brother, I am afraid I will fall. Younger brother, I am scared too. Measuring worm, gently, surely Mother Grizzly's children are not so afraid, for she is the bravest creature in the valley. Older brother, puffing out his chest and beating it with his paw. We are grizzlies. We are brave. Younger brother, doing the same. We will follow you. They pantomime following a safe path in single file, with measuring worm leading, older brother following, and younger brother behind. Below, Fox suddenly spots something, stands up, and peers more closely. Fox, excitedly, pointing to a spot about halfway up the mountain. Mother Grizzly, look! Measuring Worm is guiding your cubs down the mountain. All animals look where Fox is pointing. Mother Grizzly, joyful, fearful, be careful, my children. Mother Deer, reassuring her friend. Trust Measuring Worm. He has brought them safely this far. He will not fail you now. The animals continue to watch. They slowly lower their gaze to follow the climbers as they come down the mountain. At last, the cubs and Measuring Worm make a final leap from the mountain to the ground. The cubs run to their mother. Mother Grizzly gives them a big hug. Then she pushes them away and shakes her finger at them. Mother Grizzly, scolding. Both of you have been very naughty. Look at the trouble and worry you have caused us all. You did not listen to me and went where you were not supposed to go. Older brother, hanging his head. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Younger brother, starting to cry. I will never disobey you again. Mother Grizzly, gathering them up in her arms again. Be sure that you remember what happened today. But do not cry, little ones. It has all ended well, thanks to the help and courage of Measuring Worm. Analyze the text. Story message. Which character's actions give an example for readers to follow? What does this tell you about the story's message? The animals gather around Measuring Worm and congratulate him. Storyteller enters stage left. Then all the animals decided to call the new mountain Tutakanula, which means Measuring Worm Stone. This was to honor the heroic worm who did what no other creature could do. He saved the two bear cubs. The mountain held this name for many years until newcomers named the mountain El Capitan. We Miwok still call the mountain Tutakanula to this day. The End